This is David Foster Wallace. He committed suicide in 2008 by hanging himself in the house he shared with his wife. After he killed himself, a lot of people asked why. He was perhaps at the pinnacle of his fame as an author, in particular for the novel Infinite Jest. He apparently left a suicide note, but his wife hasn't released it. But it's worth noting that his suicide note is in fact right here in the novel Infinite Jest. I'm looking at the anniversary edition. This is pages 693 and 694. It is, in fact, David Foster Wallace's suicide note. At the beginning, he explains why most people think others commit suicide, others who have achieved a lot. And in this case, he has his alter ego, Hal Incandenza, refer to the character's father, J.O. Incandenza, who committed suicide, and, and goes through the reasons why people think he committed suicide. The presumption that he had achieved all his goals and found that the achievement didn't confer meaning or, or joy on his existence. That's what people thought. But the real reason one commits suicide, according to Hal Incandenza, who is the alter ego for Foster Wallace in this autobiographical novel is an alienation from emotions, a lack of feeling, an inability to connect, a robotic emotional life. Right here, David Foster Wallace is explaining exactly why he killed himself. Howling Candenza, which is his alter ego name in this novel, has two clues as to David Wallace's emotional state. Hal, of course, is the disembodied computer voice in 2001 A Space Odyssey. Candenza is the end of a musical score. It's the, the final part. And what Foster Wallace is saying here is that he is detached, he's unfeeling, and this is his final score, his final statement. Now, you might ask, how do we know this? Well, throughout this book, there are many clues as to the names of characters. Um, and since he killed himself, other autobiographical uh, details have come out that fill in the gaps. And uh, one in particular is that Foster, David Foster Wallace, was stalking a girlfriend named Mary Carr at the time he was writing this book. You can Google the specifics, but this was an act on his part that in today's environment would very likely lead to him getting arrested. He uh, climbed up into her apartment. He threatened her husband with um, with violence. 
uh, he was going to buy a gun. He, he said to, to um, uh, cause violence. He, he followed her children, her child around. So it, this was very violent and fear-inducing behavior on his part. There's a character in uh, Infinite Jest who, in fact, is the uh, representative for Mary Carr, and her name is Mildred Bonk. What this gets to is the essential misogyny that exists throughout the novel in terms of how David Foster Wallace views women. Throughout, he refers to women in sexual terms, uh, in terms of their breasts and their tits, or the name Mildred Bonk. He had said that he, uh, his goal in writing this book, and this came out later in letters, again, you can look it up, was to forge a connection with Mary Carr, who wanted nothing to do with him. Um, she had apparently had a brief affair with him. Um, while she was in rehab. And um, the other thing I just want to briefly mention is that hasn't gotten enough attention, I think, is the racism and that is in this book and uh, reflected in David Foster Wallace. Here is a section called Year of the Trial Size Dove Bar, which basically is a minstrel show of black characterization by David Foster Wallace. What Wallace, Foster Wallace is trying to do is create a black character, but it is so offensive, so over the top, just a, a minstrel show in words that even if David Foster Wallace didn't call himself a racist, the mere fact that he would write something like this, I think, shows uh, racist roots in a racist mindset, meaning that he objectifies and minimizes the black experiences. I mean, just read some of this uh, that is so, quite frankly, unbelievable. Wardeen say her mama ain't treat her right. Reginald, he come round to my blacktop at my building where me and Dolores Epp jump double dutch and he say, Clinette, Wardeen be down at my crib, cry, say her mama, ain't treat her right. And I go on with Reginald to his building where he live at, and Wardeen be sit deep far back in a closet in Reginald crib, and she be cry. Very disturbing. There is another part um, here. He has a character, Bruce Green, who is a racist, has... Um, this uh, offensive tattoo is a member of a racist uh, group. And of course, in the, in the context of a novel, it may well make sense to, to have such a character. But the issue here is that this guy, Bruce Green, is shown with no critical eye towards his prejudice, belief system. In fact, he's shown as heroic in the end. Now, one can make all sorts of arguments that this is a literary technique, but the relentless misogyny, uh, there is also extreme homophobia in this um, novel, and um, the the char these characterizations are not put upon white men. Uh, it's the, the black males, the gay men, and the women 
who are objectified by exaggerated physical characteristics or patterns of speech. So what do we end up with? We end up with an infinite jest with a suicide note where Wallace, David Foster Wallace, explains the rationale for suicide is intense alienation, and yet he also shows his own complete alienation through his fiction. That's a great irony. And moreover, what is ironic is that David Foster Wallace, if he's known for anything, it's that he believed that irony should be dead. Not that it was dead, but that it should be dead. Yet the greatest irony is that David Foster Wallace in Infinite Jest leaves a suicide note explaining that he's going to kill himself because of his personal alienation, and yet the entire novel simply is page after page of an alienated mind. There is no attempt to forge the gap to compassion or empathy. Infinite Jest by David Foster Wallace. If you want to read a suicide note, it's in here.